public safety radio system. Um, that system is, um, I think, it's purchased in 2000, 2001, the 800 megahertz um, system. Y'all know that it's used by all the public safety agencies, um, and we anticipate a cost of approximately $9 million. We are working with the vendors on that, hoping we're going to get that number below that $9 million. Uh, half of this cost will be uh, shared with the city of Valdosta. Yes, sir. <coughs> I think it'd be important for us to, as a commission, to know, and if we get questions out there in the community, because there was a, uh, in the last FLOSS campaign, there was a, a lot of discussion by a certain group about how much money we're spending on radios and, you know, why can't we continue to use the radios we've got instead of just upgrading. And what you state here, and I found out yesterday talking to Danny Weeks, is a lot of this equipment you can't even find parts for it anymore. And so we're forced into this because we can't maintain some of this equipment. And if they don't make parts for it, how are you going to, what are you going to do when it breaks down? And um, on the surface, it seems like, why can't you continue to use the same radios over and over? But when you understand that, and that was um, publicly made known by you know, some individuals campaigning against FLOSS, and this was just a wish list that we were trying to get a bunch of radios out. This was uh, just prior to my coming to Lambs County. This was a very sensitive, yes, a very uh, contentious issue that got a lot of discussion uh, among the commissioners and uh, public safety officials and so forth. Um, and it was uh, quite an elaborate system of locating of towers throughout the county, not to mention the actual radio equipment itself. So. Um, that that life expectancy at that time was really a little longer than what we've experienced. But as y'all know, that's not uncommon in technology, and it seems to be that those life expectancies become shorter and shorter uh, as technologies change and new equipment is available. And as Commissioner Page said, uh, vendors no longer provide that for the service that equipment. So it, uh, it places the burden back on you to provide those needed uh, items for emergency response to benefit those taxpayers. So it's an ongoing process. But uh, we will be working with the company on this uh, as far as the actual timeline on when we will do this, I, uh, it will depend on availability of money and how well the system continues to operate. Uh, Danny is very, very nervous. I told him first that it could be four years out. And, uh, he's, he's very concerned that we can get uh, some of the equipment. We'll continue to be updating you on this and seeing how the progress uh, goes. Any questions? I, I had in my mind that it was an $8 million system. Has it always been a $9 million system? Yes. Uh, I just, we talk, for some reason, I kept focusing well, on $8 million. Well, last time, a year ago, we were talking about $8 million. And uh, the company came back to us and said, we think it may be closer to nine, and that you probably should prepare for nine, but we hope we can get it for less than that. Okay. So we we edged up our allocation on that based on that comment from the district. Uh, again, as I said, I, I'm hopeful that if it's over eight, it will be only a slight edge. And, and certainly, I'm sure as <coughs> the need is very, very important as well, but we're also going to have to work with the city of Valdosta from the standpoint of when they will potentially plan on providing their half of the revenue to be able to get this project completed as well. So there's going to be some coordination. Well, my assumption is it's a 
pretty heavy timing issues even when you've got funds available because you got to get the new stuff in, you got to get it set up, you got to transition everybody over. And I'm sure that's not just, hey, here's a new radio rock yeah, and roll. There'll come a point in time that you can't, you can no longer say, okay, well, we're just going to sit and wait for it to crash. But right. Once that happens, you're out of business. Yeah. We're going to have to get to a point to where the repairs and Danny, of course, will make that decision that we'll be looking at it, that we've got to move forward with this and, and get everything in and make that transition. We had for a while with the old system, <clears throat> we had some spots in the county that were just totally dead and it took a few weeks to trans get through that, that system, that process be corrected. I could just see lawsuits happening all over the place if we had an emergency and not be able to communicate. I, I think the information that Danny shared yesterday on the actual process and how they are set up for duplication of calls, duplication of uh, uh, radio service, uh, as well as uh, power. Uh, <coughs> gave Commissioner Page an indication of how complex and complicated this communication system is, and also how vital it is to uh, the process. I mean, when you start looking at the number of calls, that Getting in, uh, <coughs> the service calls are seven thousand in a week, uh, something like that. I mean, those are tremendous numbers that these people are having to answer. And John, let's just like to touch on the, you know, one concern I addressed uh, in the retreat was that we will perhaps get through uh, everything's on our system totally. Um, as I pointed out before. Uh, uh, fiber and everything is running through the city of Ohio. Uh, infrastructure as well, should I say. So Part of the uh, game touched on this yesterday. We remember Commissioner Page about the duplication for that Stewart Street uh, tower and that this will provide a duplication here so that we don't have to rely solely on that. And that was our lack of redundancy was that one area, so this will prevent that. So what you talking about? Yes, because uh, all of the spikes inside the basement of City Hall and ultimately jump us to uh, track and action. Um, the next item is 